Hello again, everybody. Now, we have talked about uh, legato in different ways in the past in various videos I've made. Uh, we talked about at one point about the down bow. Remember the down bow? That's a sort of physical manifestation of what our imagination is doing. And so when we sing, we imagine that we're doing intervals like this. No up bows. We go, ah, we don't go, ah, so if I go, ah, 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 I go, ah, ah, So the next step, of course, is to do that in music with intervals and text. So I go, I'm like that. Non gelerei per me non fare letto. And I try my best to only down bow, one speed, one direction, as if I'm playing only on one string, and I'm doing this constantly. And everything I sing in every language, I try to do that, but some, as you, we will uh, explain here, some of them are very difficult to do that way. Then another manifestation, physical one, is we imagine that we, we absolutely breathe in by pulling this in at a, at a particular rate of speed. Let's say we go in five inches, six centimeters, something like that, and go. Now I turn around and make this move and go, and I'm trying to maintain exactly a mirror image of the way I breathe in. I'm exhaling, and while I'm exhaling, I'm moving at exactly the same rate of speed and uh, as much as I can uh, in an opposite direction. Caruso called that contrary motion. So I'm going to pull this in and take a breath. And now I'm going to send it back out at the same speed and angle and hopefully degree of energy. So I'm going to go. If I exhale, I go. Now make that with noise so people can hear it on the tapes. Ideally, I would do everything silently. I'd go. And my inhalation and exhalation would be totally silent. I'd try my best. Uh, imagine I'm making recordings and I've got a microphone right here. And, or singing with the microphone. You don't want to hear <gasps> while I'm singing. So you get so you, you, you can do it silently. So I go, you stand there, nobody even knows you took a breath. And then you start singing and you do this way of leaning. You go, Aah! Oh, you're down, though. Ah, right? So that's contrary to the way I breathe in. I'm breathing in this way. I'm directing my inhalation to a certain place, which is my uh, the tip of my tailbone. I'm breathing way down in my lower back as much as possible. And I'm directing, I'm going... No, the same rate of speed, the same degree of activity and everything I'm doing uh, reverses and does an, a perfect contrary motion and mirror image. So I go, now, where do I direct my lean? Into my diaphragm. We talked about different points of lean, the circle of the chakras. The truth is you can lean this breath. Uh, once you get the idea of, of uh, singing directionally, you can direct your exhalation any place you want to, sort of. Right? As long as you stay within reason, within these, these points of, uh, of uh, meditation that have been worked out thousands of years ago, if we exploit those, we can sing there. So really what we're doing right now is talking about what do we do with the breath when, we, when we're placing it in different places. I'm going to take a breath. Now that was the speed I took it in. And now I'll do a contrary motion. I'll exhale it on my diaphragm. Ah, and my hand is supposed to show exactly what rate of speed I'm doing in. If I, if I lift my arms like this and put them down, that's not a contrary motion. I have to put them up and then put them down to the same speed. Now, the reason I'm reviewing this is because we're going to try to get a little bit more subtle today. We did down bow and then we did absolute physical uh, hand movement as a reflection of what we're doing in our diaphragm. And now we're gonna do what's called intercostal breathing.
Intercostal breathing means that I breathe in a way that the intercostal muscles inside the ribs expand the ribs. And George London used to say, uh, nothing moves unless the breathing moves it. So I don't just expand my ribs like that. I have to, if I'm going to do intercostal breathing, I have to literally uh, breathe in order to get this process to happen. So the way I breathe is I tuck this in right here as I'm breathing in. And then I exhale against that while I'm singing. So I go, I, it, it looks like this. I go, la, la. So you can see that I'm inhaling and exhaling. And it's called intercostal breathing to breathe this way. It's, uh, you'll find it in books, uh, Giacomo Lally Volpe talks about it in his book. A lot of great singers use uh, the best, probably the best, one of the best videos is Leonard Warren singing None But the Lonely Heart by Tchaikovsky. And you see this magnificent breath process. George Leonard used to call it the machine. The machine. Make them work the machine, Mike. Make them work the machine. The machine <laughs> produces everything. I don't need to worry about all of this focusing and all the lifting and all that. If I can get my machine to run, it's, 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 do I really need to do something more than that? If I can breathe and get this, this inhalation, exhalation process in order, and I'm going to breathe intercostal, in my intercostal process, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go. Now there's all that breath sitting way down in my lower back. Now what do I do with it? I exhale it against my diaphragm. Like that. Tito Schipa and Claudia Muzzo called it Sighing. So if I went, ah, breathe in, the happy sigh, ah, right? Breathe in, the wistful sigh, ah. There are all these possibilities for sighing, but sighing is also a form of exhaling from the intercostal process. I breathe in, I'll sigh once. Now I'm going to do pure intercostal breathing and exhalation. So you realize that if you breathe intercost intercostally, right? I breathe. No, I can sing anything. Anything I want. But that's exhaled at exactly the, the rate and, and, and reflection of what I did when I went in. It's an ideally mirror image. So all of these all of these terms that we use, down bowing and and uh, solar plexus guiding and all these things that we do, they're all have to do with breath control, which means diaphragmatic and rib control. These intercostal muscles are released gradually as the air leaves. So nothing moves unless the breath moves it. So I'm going to breathe in. The inhalation moves those, moves those muscles and ribs and everything. And then I'm going to exhale. And now the, the, the loss of breath is moving everything. So this constant process of expanding and contracting. Uh, Caruso called that uh, uh, the bellows. He said you open up everything like a bellows. Well, a bellows doesn't, you put the bellows like that and the air starts to move in the bellows. You go, and even that, how accurate is that? We don't know exactly how accurate these things are in terms of we we describe them, but we know that this goes in when we breathe in and out when we breathe out. Now, we can do a lot of ideas that way. We can place the breath. Uh, I've talked about Delmonico here. Uh, Tetrosini here, uh, Aureliano Pertile on the pectoral muscles, uh, Pavarotti down here slightly below this area, right, uh, right above the navel. Everybody has a, a, a place that they guide the exhalation to while they're singing. But still, this process, this intercostal process of going, and now I'm ready to guide the breath somewhere. And so I can, I can, you know, sometimes I fall in love with a sound or I fall in love or somebody else convinces me that's the best sound. That one sounds the biggest in the theater. Well, is the biggest always the most important? 
I heard Yussi Bierling had the most incredible and beautiful voice, and he got covered by the orchestra sometimes. Believe me, you didn't care, because when, when you could hear him, it was so beautiful that you said, oh, I don't care what happens, I just want to hear that sound. So if I breathe, so I'm guiding my exhalation the entire time I'm singing based on intercostal breathing. Now, Caruso said in his book, never sing while you're, while you're still breathing in. On the other hand, there are some great singers in the German world, German uh, speaking world, German repertoire world, who, who, who sing while they're, still, while they're breathing in. They go, ah, they call it fat halten. It's a way of stopping the breath inward. Ah, and you can certainly sing that way. Ah, but it is not the old Italian way that Caruso learned when he was young. Remember when, the, when he was studying? He was born in 1873, right? He was studying, you know, at age whatever. Uh, he was a child singer and then sang. So they had all of the so-called bel canto era training in those days, and that's how he was trained. And... Uh, Later on, of course, he could sing anything fantastically. But if you breathe uh, that way, I'm going to breathe in. I'm not going to attack while I'm breathing in. I'm going to wait till I have the breath, and then I'm going to exhale. <sighs> Some people call it exhaling the voice. You must never exhale it against here. You must exhale it somewhere that does what Lily Lehman calls the breath stop. So you breathe in. Let's say I exhale right here on this button. I go. I can sing that way. Right? Breathe in. I'll put it here where Delmonico did. But I exhale and I do not let it rise above here. So I go. Breathe in, pull it in, aim it at the lower back, and you start to sing, and you put it here, and you go. And I'm guiding my exhalation the whole time right here against my diaphragm. I went through the, uh, the, uh, the, shock, the circle of the chakras, and I've done various tapes to show how you can lean this in different places. What I really wanted to do today was define this term, intercostal breathing. It is a way of breathing where this goes in, everything goes down, the ribs expand like, I don't, I don't, rib, I don't expand my ribs like this because it makes me tight and I get reactions. So I don't let anything move unless the breathing moves it. So I'm going to breathe. Now my ribs went out like crazy, and now when I start to sing, I do a contrary motion, which means I exhale right here in the, in, the, in the spot that I was pulling in before. So I go, ah, and you do big music, and you do light music, you do everything from here. If I sing some bigger music, I get, ah, ah, That's the animal song from Siegfried. And you got about 130 piece orchestra going full blast the whole time. So uh, I, I, I prefer to have a much heavier, bigger voice to do that so they can sing it comfortably and still come across like this savage who's raised in the forest and uh, singing some song that he loves to sing while he hammers on the animal. Uh, the lighter voices or the medium sized voices uh, have to be much more careful. But the tendency is to start emphasizing. Then I'm doing more than just exhaling. I'm actually intensifying. See, I can go, huh, huh, and a lot of singers use that preset. Huh, 
It has a name, the Valsalva Maneuver. I've talked about that too in some of the videotapes. And if you do that, you go, Hala! There are ways to intensify that. But if you are a pure uh, kind of breather, you use only then the intercostal breathing and the voice it gives you now when you do the contrary motion. <laughs> See that? Oh, me so gerne wie Mächte, me fast Verzweiflung, voll der Sport, me fast Verzweiflung, voll der Sport, voll der Sport. In other words, you can sing any kind of music with an intercostal breathing method but your voice may not be adequate for the competition that the orchestra provides. And the orchestra can really set up a lot of noise down there. <clears throat> Depends on the composer. Some of the composers were, were more aware of such things and they would take out some of the most competitive sounds, some of the winds, they'll take them out and you'll have a violin accompaniment. Well, that'll let you sing, uh, it'll let you be heard a little bit better in a lower tessitura or with an orchestra playing louder. Then some conductors play loud. You can't get the conductor to, to, to hold the orchestra down. It's very difficult for the orchestra to play sort of softly all night so that the singer can be heard. Uh, you, you wish it were not that way. You wish you just had so much voice, you could just relax and be heard no matter what. But the main thing is to learn all these various uh, breathing methods so that you are a free uh, artist. You're a free vocal artist. You can then decide what you want to do. This is one that needs to be practiced all the time. Pull it in when you breathe. You can see it going in. I go like this. Now let's add something on here that can be a little bit confusing, but you have to understand it. When I'm absolutely full, this will want to go back out slightly. So watch, I go. See that? Right at the end of the breath when I'm really full. Now some of the singers, some of the younger singers are going to fill up sooner, and some of the uh, singers who have greater capacity than I do will fill up later. So it, but it will happen eventually at the end of the uh, of your inhalation. So if I breathe in, and that's all the room I have, it comes out real, real, real early. I go, and there it is. You're still directing and aiming and placing your breathing as low as you can, and you practice breathing all the time, and you hope that. Over years, your breathing develops. If you do yoga and, and, and swim a couple of miles every day and, and uh, do Caruso's 40-step walk where you walk 10 steps breathing in, walk 10 steps holding it, walk 10 steps exhaling, and walk 10 steps holding empty. And you do that. He did it for an hour and a half every day, according to the secretary. So over years, that develops a tremendous breath capacity. Uh, a, lot of this, uh, a lot of the singers have backgrounds playing brass or wind instruments. Uh, Benjamino Gili was a saxophonist, uh, Giovanni Martinelli was a clarinetist, and Nikolai Gyarov was, uh, was, uh, played trombone and uh, clarinet. Uh, Joan Sutherland and Nellie Melba were both ocean swimmers. Kirsten Flockstad was a long-distance swimmer in Scandinavia, swimming those huge lakes they have up there. In other words, every time you find some singer, even I, was a tuba player, so it's like, and a harmonica player, so everybody who uh, seems to have, uh, you know, more, a little more breath capacity. They have this background of uh, some kind of physical activity, sport, something, a musical instrument, something that, that exaggerated the development of the breathing. Caruso was an ocean swimmer, for instance, um, also. So was Franco Corelli. So if you realize, wait a minute, if I'm going to have your and Robert Merrill did hours of yoga every day, every day. When you do yoga and you're doing all that breathing, you go, and back and forth. Think about that. And then uh, Jerome Hines and Franco Corelli and Tabaldi used this, uh, this breathing exercise. Now look what happens right here when I do that. See, it's called the Muller Maneuver. It has a name, Breathing Against a Closed Lattice. So I go, you know, and, uh, Jerome Hines sang the Metropolitan Opera over 50 years and never had a vocal problem. It doesn't damage or do anything to the throat at all. So today is Intercostal Breathing Day, Identification Day. So we're going to identify that I pull in right here. 
And then I do a contrary motion. Ah, breathe. Ah, that's all. That's all there is to it. If you practice this constantly, you will get not only capacity, but you will get control. And control is everything. And by the way, it has a certain effect on the quality of the sound. If I breathe here, ah, ah. Ah, if I only breathe in here, I go, ah, 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 a lot of singers want their shoulders to go up when they breathe. Ah, 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 ah. What if I do the opposite and relax my shoulders and breathe here and go, see my shoulders relax. Ah, 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 ah. The voice gets a little bit rounder. The time's called a chiaroscuro, bright, dark. Uh, some singers do things up here to make the voice sound different, right? And uh, you, you shouldn't have to do anything up here if the breathing is adequate. Breathe. Ah, 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 into the true mask, which is up here. Lily Lehman said the true mask is the upper front half of the skull. Now that's pretty big and pretty clear. How do we get it up there? Ideally, just breathing. Even the nasalized vowels in French. If I breathe this way, I go. Chagrin, 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 prison, 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 maintenant, 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 maintenant. I can say maintenant, chagrin, prison, and I do not have to put it in my nose. Nasalize is almost a wrong word. It's not really what happens, you know? Breathe in, and now say prison, 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 chagrin, chagrin. I don't want to be down here and have to sing a high note, that's for sure, right? So I go, ah, ha, ha. No, I don't want that. So I breathe in, I go, contrary motion. So I go, ah, so ah, None of that goes in my nose, and the people can understand me perfectly well. Okay, hope that's clear. Thank you. Bye.